Hey there everyone, welcome to another episode of Audi Outdoors. I'm here doing a video about my Velobile. I'm going to kind of discuss kind of the, some of the upgrades, some of the repairs I've done. And just kind of give you guys an update on it. So currently the brakes aren't working too well. They haven't worked too well since I got it. It's still rideable like that, but I, it took me a while to get a hold of someone who had the brakes in stock. Because this has 90 millimeter drum brakes. To give you an idea of what they look like. I got these straight from Germany. A lot cheaper getting them straight from Germany. So each wheel takes one of these. This is a back plate with the shoes on it. And pretty much what happens is when you pull the lever inside, you activate, expand, and it hits against the inner drum. I'm doing both sides because you, you should always replace brakes evenly. And to go with that, I'm having the Jaguar brake cable kit. I think it's technically, no, it is a brake cable kit. I've always found Jaguar to be reliable. This is the Pro kit, so I did get special cable cutters to cut this one. You don't need special cable cutters if you know what you're doing. Um, one of the things I had to replace this year was this visor here. Because where one of the pin locks goes at on the old visor, it cracked. And this was, the pin in here would just maneuver around. And this insert in here would just flop down when you flip the hood up like that. This insert in here would just come down. And I kind of drilled too, a little too low on that. But it is what it is. I had to put it back up where it was. Uh, I now leave these vents pretty much cracked open all the time. See, I got a sponsor, Lancaster Recumbent, and I am a Marine Corps veteran. I added these blue reflective decals from Oralite. They're a lot more reflective than the stock decals that you see up here where pretty much any of their silver decals are. Those are reflective as well, but not as reflective as these blue decals. At night, like, or even during the day, if you take a picture of these, so like, say if I turn on my camera, or my, uh, I flash on my camera. You can probably see it light up there, even during the daytime. Can't get the camera light turned on manually. So you can't really see it, but usually when people take pictures of it, it looks like the side of it's all lit up. These letters are all reflective. They're all fine. Uh, headlights, still stock. Um, I'm gonna have to touch up the paint right here started out as a little crack when I first got it and just all the paint in this area is starting to come off you can see more here cracks starting over the winter time that will just peel off and flake off one of the things I haven't installed yet is the Garmin Montana um, the Iridium antenna I usually put that right here and now that I'm pretty much set that I'm going to run the Montana in the Velomobile I'm kind of debating on drilling a hole up here to run the wire through for the antenna. Up here is some more areas I need paint touch up. Problem is the paint is $80 for gel coat paint just for the paint can, just for the paint. And I still have to buy the compressor and everything to apply it with. So, but this is the racing hood. This is actually extra aftermarket, about $850 extra aftermarket. The Velobile. I also got this, this is a Ventasit uh, neck pad, for the, specifically for the Velomobiles. So Ventasit actually specifically makes this for Velomobiles. And it's kind of Velcro's in there, it has a adhesive tape in there that, that sticks to. And that, that just lets you lean your neck back against it and not get hit with this rear lip here. Now what it does come with stock is this little foam cover up in here. You can see it stores up in there and all you do is you grab it from here. Pull it back a little bit, fold it, and it comes out. So this goes on here like this. You can see there's little Velcro tabs all the way around it. Well up inside here, there's little Velcro tabs that that, that attaches to. So go ahead and attach that. You kind of got to push it to the shape of the Velmobile. 
it's not always gonna match up 100% so these things are very flexible but it comes with this and it comes with this for when you park it overnight somewhere so like if you're going to like a automobile meetup or something like that and it's gonna rain you don't want a bunch of rain to get in you use that and pretty much you just put this velcro tab there's a piece of velcro right here that this attaches to and all you do is make sure that's nice and tight put that in and now normally this sits under here but my ventasit neck pads in the way so you can take the neck pad off and just on velcros like that you can just throw that down in there and then there's a velcro pad here that, that attaches to and that keeps all the water out of your velomobile overnight if you don't have the racing hood and i do run the racing hood mostly in any temperature below 70 degrees i can run the racing hood anything above 70 degrees it's it's too hot in there to run a racing hood so but this comes in handy great for when it's raining out so the foam cover does anyway so if i'm running in the summertime right now it's probably about 92 degrees out here i don't really run this when it's really hot out and again this just kind of goes right up in here sometimes this does hit your legs but once you get it in there perfectly there's a certain way you get it in that it just doesn't hit your legs anymore and just kind of push that straight in all the way up now i usually take these tabs and i'll velcro it up to that so that way these ends don't hit my legs i'm gonna go ahead and put this vent to sit pad back the neck pad back one of the other upgrades I did to this is I got the Schlumpf Mountain Drive, which is up here. You can see that button on the end of the crank arm. When I push that in, it reduces that front gear by two and a half, essentially giving me a two-speed front without having to hook up a derailleur. Now, this is the non-chamfering version, so it just has like a little metal piece that I just put in place with... Um, worm gear clamp as you can see right there I got the Garmin Vector 3 pedals these are brand new from Garmin they just replaced them and I don't know if you can see that down there but there's a fan now I run a fan in the summertime and I have it hooked into my 12 volt battery over here and this controller has been kind of dying on me I probably need a new fan see it's not really working right now for some reason I don't know what's up with it but I got like wiggle it around sometimes yeah it's not working it's just kind of been dying on me slowly for the past couple of rides maybe the battery's too hot no still let me run the turn signals and everything so let's go ahead and try to get this working here there's a lot of corrosion in there from me running it on my ATV and stuff like that because this is a universal thing it just plugs right in so it's got the regular adapter I just unplug this one I don't want to run it but I also upgraded the I, I put a strobe on the back so that I control by this switch here which this switch usually controls the map light stock so usually there's a little light up in here but I don't use a map, I use GPS, which I secure my GPS's over here. Got the regular Garmin edge mount up there. And I mount the Montana right there. I use the whole back of the battery on the Montana to mount it. And I can charge it off of that. I just switch that on when I want it to charge them. I turn the strobe on on the back. It's a pretty bright light. Especially at night. I did do a video on this. This is the light I said was one of the brightest lights you can get. And it runs off a 12 volt system. Again, it was just easy to install and I did it. Um, another thing, I'm gonna turn this off. Another thing I upgraded was the tires. 
tires are switched to the uh, Schwalbe Marathon Plus. The stock size in the rear, 26 by 2.0. And I want two a little thicker ones in the front because they didn't have thinner ones. They're 20 by 1.35. Also Schwalbe Marathon Plus. It says e-bike ready, but these tires are some of the most puncture resistant tires out there. I changed them out because the Schwalbe Pro ones I had on there, they just kept getting popped in the front. The Kojak, I used to run a Schwalbe Kojak in the rear, and that thing never popped. That was a, basically a racing slick. But as you can see, Schwalbe Marathon Pluses have somewhat of a tread pattern on them. But right in the middle here, it's very, very thick. So you can get a nail in that and it probably won't even go through it. It'll probably bend the nail before it actually punctures through the entire casing. It's really thick. Let's see. I think that's probably all the upgrades I did since I did my video last. Because I got rid of the 2 by, So it came stuck with a 3 by drivetrain. And what was happening was it would get stuck between the 2nd and 3rd gear. And it just... The derailleur mass down there you can see up in the middle there that's what the derailleur mounts to that kept bending every time i'd i'd go to shift it at first i just upgraded from the grip shift to a trigger shift that worked for a while but it just shifted like crap and i just i couldn't deal with it it didn't go low enough the gearing was not low enough on this thing so i took that off and i put on these uh grip spacers that come with SRAM and one of the reasons why you can't run a bigger usually most people go to bigger cogs in the back to go lower speed well this has a shell around here that surrounds the derailleur this is so no dirt or anything gets in your derailleur the system's completely sealed like this chain I have on here has about a thousand miles on it and you can see it's not too dirty it's still pretty good it has about a thousand miles on it I only lubed it once but also from the factory two mirror two cone mirrors are optional you, you can get them without mirrors but I like mine with mirrors so because you're gonna want mirrors down the line anyway so no reason why not to get the mirrors also the dual headlights make these lights just bright enough that you don't have to run another light now I can run another light if I want to I usually run the exposure light six pack mk7 and I do that with a suction cup mount I can install it here I can stuck install a suction cup mount pretty much anywhere there's a smooth surface on this you know I and the six pack mk7 has a good battery life I use it all on my other bikes so the battery I chose was a tracker lithium iron phosphate, which is not a lipo. It's a L I F E P O four lifepo four battery. You don't want to run a lipo battery in these because it gets warm in here, and lipo batteries don't like are very sensitive and damage very easily. So I got this lipo four or lifepo four battery in here. And this thing will run probably about 48 to 50 hours before I can charge the battery. And that'll run, that's running all my lights all the time. And I just leave that plugged in. I don't have any um, drains in this Velmobile and I know like power drains in this Velmobile, it just, it just works. The only problem I have is on low beam. Sometimes the low beam doesn't work for some reason. It just flickers or something, I don't know. I also run this JBL uh, Charge Extreme 3 or JBL Extreme 3 and that's just for entertainment purposes I keep a I got this foam pad over here for when I have to do roadside repairs so when you, whenever you have to do like a tire change or something or chain falls off you have to roll this thing on its side and in order to prevent damage I got the foam pad in there is to put down on the ground first and that way I can just roll it over and not have to worry about whatever is on the ground so sometimes I'm on a rail trail I pop it on a piece of gravel I don't want to roll this thing over on gravel and get it all scratched up 
So, yeah, that kind of works out there. One thing I gotta note is that I do ride this mostly at night, almost exclusively at night, because it's usually cooler at night during the summertime and there's not as many vehicles on the road, so I prefer to ride at night. A lot, less, a lot more peaceful. Uh, you can tell all the bugs I've hit on here. I did wash this thing, but I took it for a night ride a couple nights ago. Oh, actually, yesterday I took it for a day ride. It was cool enough yesterday. It only got up to 80 degrees yesterday. I rode it without the racing hood on there, so it was fine doing that. Yeah, come the fall, it gets down to the 60s and 70s, during the day. I'll be riding this thing a lot more, but right now I'm riding a regular road bike. So I also got myself a something else that I'm going to do on this channel. But that's it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.